Is Zach Veach's career over? Probably. Send in the Canadian. But first, some IMSA news. Big time news for the future of the prototype category, at least for next year, 2021. Acura Motorsports has announced this morning that its two-car DPI program will continue, but unlike this year and years past where it has only been Team Penske running the operation, now Acura will field two one-car teams that will work closely together. Those two teams, the first one, not much of a surprise if you're familiar with the Honda factory programs across motorsports. It's Meyer Shank Racing. Now this will be the first time they will compete in the prototype category with the Acura ARX 05 since they left the prototype category in 2016 when they ran Ligiers, which were ironically enough powered by Hondas. Then they moved to the GTD class uh, and have been there since then. But the major bombshell today, at least in terms of the balance of power in the IMSA series, is the fact that Wayne Taylor Racing will be defecting from the oh-so-potent Cadillac DPI and moving to the Acura program. Now, in terms of the IMSA car count for next year, at the moment, this is a net loss. Meyer Shank Racing announced during the press conference that they will not be continuing their in-house Acura NSX program. That means uh, that's minus one car, two from the GTD grid, gain one in the prototype, or not gain one, but neutralize in the prototype division. So you lose two cars overall there. And then with Wayne Taylor leaving the Cadillac ranks and moving into a second into the second Penske slot, that means there's one less prototype on the grid as things stand right now. However, there were a lot more small nuggets we need to talk about from this and implications that will hopefully go well past 2021 as this is a multiple year deal for both teams with Acura. And we'll start with the Meyer Shank Racing Team because this indeed was something that, while I won't say was an absolute slam dunk, it's about as close to a slam dunk as you could have expected. As soon as Penske announced that they were going to part ways with Acura, and by the way, a lot of I know there's going to be a lot of comments about this because I was getting them on Twitter as I was reporting on the press conference, but as far as we're aware, Penske is only going to be gone for a, a season or two at most. They're almost certainly going to get back into the game when the LMDH cars are uh, put into effect, whether that's at the end of 2022 or at the beginning of 2023. I would expect, uh, as Danny Sullivan always says, Roger always has a chair. And I don't think Roger's going to be out of sports car racing for very long, especially if he's got an opportunity to, to hook up with a factory team that will want to bring an LMDH not only to IMSA, but also to the 24 Hours of Le Mans and not have Roger uh, foot the bill for that. So, Meyer Shank Racing. That is interesting for a lot of respects. First of all, I guess we'll talk about the GTD uh, situation because, yes, Meyer Shank Racing is not going to be running GTDs at all next year. So, as we're standing right now, that's a net loss of, uh, of one car from Meyer Shank Racing's commitment. We'll get back to that because there's some interesting potential moves that could be made on, on the other side of the aisle with that. That being said, the GTD Acura program is far from over. In fact, uh, uh, Ted Klaus, who is the head of the Acura Motorsports division, was, was, I would say, bullish on the GTD Acura program moving much more away from factory involvement, though the factory very much is going to stay involved, actually through Michael Meyer Shank Racing, uh, to help any customer teams that come into the Acura program in GTD to get them on the grid. So... From the perspective of, I guess there's a question of whether or not uh, there will be extra Acuras on the grid next year. Right now, I would lean toward there's probably going to be more Acuras. The spots left by Meyer Shank Racing in GTD will probably be filled. I, that would be my guess, especially because uh, the Shank team straight up said, no BS, we will offer any assistance uh, with our setup data for the NSXs to any customer teams that join up with the Acura program. So that's a good thing from the GTD perspective. From the prototype perspective, Michael Shank Racing, or Meyer Shank as we now know it, has been really a prototype stalwart. It's really been only in the last few years that they've been a GTD team. And 
I, for one, am happy they're back in prototype. To me, prototypes are the draw, the big draw of, of sports car racing. And, and you want a really robust, diverse, interesting prototype division. And certainly, getting a couple extra teams uh, involved in the Acura program, especially Meyer Shank Racing, a team that works so hard, it seems, all the time, struggling, or not necessarily struggling, but just you know chugging along, uh, a real, real working man's blue-collar team, that team in particular. So here's where things get a little bit interesting. No drivers were announced today, but I think you can make some reasonable assumptions of the drivers that are on the table for this program. It's probably drivers who are currently associated with Team Penske uh, in the Acura program. So you think of the driver market like Dane Cameron, you think Juan Pablo Montoya, you think Ricky Taylor. I think that's obvious where he's probably going to go, and Elio Castroneves. Now, there was a story published in Racer uh, just a couple of days ago talking about the, the potential of Elio Castroneves getting back to the Indianapolis 500 and to IndyCar. And so, which of the two teams that were announced today, Wayne Taylor Racing and uh, Meyer Shank, has currently an IndyCar team? That would be Meyer Shank. And Michael Shank himself has started to be making a little bit of noise about possibly doing a second car at the Indy 500, prob- maybe further uh, races in the 2021 season. So it's reasonable to assume, and let's also assume at this particular moment that Juan Pablo Montoya is off the table, you could go get Elio Castroneves. You could run him as your full-time IMSA driver, bring him over for the Indy 500, and any weekends you're not running IMSA, maybe have that second GTD team that uh, hopefully Michael Shank isn't going to lay off, have them become the IndyCar team, and have Elio Castroneves partner with Jack Harvey for most of the season in IndyCar, and then also have that experience, the setup experience, and, and some of that setup data from Team Penske coming over with Elio Castroneves. I don't know. And one of the great quotes from Michael Shank before we get on to Wayne Taylor was, uh, and I quote, anything, anything is possible in regards to DPI drivers coming and running the Indy 500 for Michael Shank. So just, just think about that. Wayne Taylor's a little more cut and dry. Uh, they're a sports car team by and by. It's a little bit surprising, no doubt about it, to see them uh, step away from Cadillac. But I think, at least based on Wayne's quotes today in the press conference, it certainly seemed like Wayne is, wanted more support. And I guess he wasn't getting quite the level of support uh, that he maybe dreamed about from Cadillac. He didn't have any bad words to say about Cadillac. I don't want to pretend like this is some um, anything but an amicable split. But it seems like Acura is really gung-ho on supporting these two teams and getting them to the front of the grid. And in particular, Wayne is looking to the future. He's looking to LMDH and looking at the potential of going to Le Mans as a semi-factory team and running an Acura, or probably as it would be badged if it went to Le Mans, a Honda. The final kind of bit of news from this was the fact that the Acura boss, uh, Ted Klaus, uh, pretty much said, look, we want to be in LMDH, which is the second version of the DPI uh, prototype formula coming down the line, and they were most excited about the hybrids. So that's good. They said, obviously, they have to read the rules first, and apparently the rules are being published for the manufacturers today, but it sounds very good that Acura will be involved with the next prototype regulations. So that's a solid base for IMSA and Acura themselves are not opposed to Meyer Shank or Wayne Taylor or any other teams that end up joining that Acura program down the line from going to Le Mans. Though it doesn't sound like they're going to be a super heavy factory involvement if those programs choose to go to Le Mans. It's going to have to be sponsorship driven, which Wayne Taylor indicated that Konica Minolta is pretty much absolutely in to run Le Mans with them. It's an exciting time for IMSA, despite the fact that at the moment it's a net uh, loss in terms of car count, but the fact that it strengthens and diversifies the prototype ranks a little bit gets a thumbs up from me right now. But another one of the big stories today, and another one that was fairly shocking, is the fact that Zach Veach, effective immediately, will be leaving the Andretti Autosport number 26 the vacant Gamebridge car, and yes, Gamebridge sticking around, we're gonna talk about that in just a second, uh, will be an open car right now for the final three races. Veach, specifically in Andretti Autosport, mentioned that Veach is getting out of the way for Andretti to try out different drivers. 
So who is that driver, or possibly multiple drivers, who will get a tryout in the final three races of the season, the two races at the Harvest GP in St. Petersburg, and why is it James Hinchcliffe? Yes, it's my understanding, and I've heard it from multiple people, and I'm fairly confident that it's going to happen, is that James Hinchcliffe is going to get this seat. Now, is it going to be for the entire rest of the season? That remains to be seen, but I think it's fairly obvious that Andretti Autosport has their eye set on getting James Hinchcliffe in a seat for next season, and this makes a lot of sense. I guess we'll talk about Zach Veach first, because I know there's a lot of people who hate on Veach, and, you know, it's no secret. The guy has not performed at the level his teammates have. Certainly, the way that Colton Herta has kind of come into that team, not even last year, I mean, he was a satellite car last year, but certainly this year, and performed at a very high level, matching and really in some ways exceeding Rossi and Hunter Ray. You... you you look at Veach and say, okay, this guy theoretically is be- being given the same opportunity here and isn't producing. Now, that could be a myriad of, of problems. It could, it, you know, it, it's not just a talent issue on Zach Veach's part. I'm sure of that. Um, but at the same time, something is not working at that Andretti Autosport team with Zach Veach. And so it makes total sense to me that they would part ways and I just expected that this would come at the end of the season and not before. Now, that being said, I've also heard that Zach got a raw deal in this particular instance. Um, and the sponsor, Gainbridge, which everyone associates with Zach Veach because he brought them into the sport, is apparently sticking with Andretti Autosport and not with Zach Veach going forward. And that means whoever the driver is who gets into that seat next year We'll have Gamebridge sponsorship. So, yeah, that's that's no bueno. Um, that's that's unfortunate that um, that that's how it kind of panned out. Uh, I'm sure there, everybody wishes there was a, not everybody wishes, but I'm sure Zach Veach wishes that this had gone a different way. And I certainly empathize um, with with his struggles because that, you know, sometimes this is a nasty business. Unfortunately. Um, so obviously, I expect James Hinchcliffe to take this seat, probably for all three races. Um, but there are other drivers that are rumored to be in the running in Andretti Autosport. Um, Kyle Kirkwood is one, though I would expect that he's going to run lights next year and not run a full IndyCar season. But if they're trying drivers out, maybe you throw him in one of the Indy races. Why not? Uh, Devlin DeFrancesco is another one. It looks like he may be, if not the winner of the Indy Pro 2000 Championship this year, uh, he may be you know, second, and he has apparently uh, 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 oodles and oodles of cash. So theoretically, he could go to IndyCar next year, and he's looking up at that Harding Steinbrenner, or not, I guess Harding's out now. It's the Steinbrenner Racing 88 car, um, and there's a potential that Colton could move over to the 26 too, which is kind of interesting. I don't know why they would do that, um, but that's something that's on the table right now. So I, I don't know if there's really anybody else. I know some people have thrown out Connor Daly as a possibility. Uh, again, I think all roads lead to Hinch right now. I think Hinch really performed very well when he got his opportunity, especially at Indianapolis. And I think with a full season, a full-time pit crew, I think he's going to do really good things. Again, pending announcement, though I, I don't expect that it's going to be anybody else. But we're going to have to talk IndyCar silly season pretty soon because there's a lot more stuff uh, that's still on the table, a lot of seats that are still open. Uh, Theoretically, Marco Andretti still hasn't signed for Andretti Autosport. I think ideally he becomes the Indy-only sixth car, and then you open up that full-time seat for somebody else, but I doubt that's going to happen. So what do you think of all this? Accurate DPI news, Zach Veach, potentially James Hinchcliffe replacing him. Let me know down in the comments section below. Subscribe for more IndyCar, IMSA, and motorsport content. This has been David Land on YouTube. Just hit 50,000 subscribers and rapidly rising at this point. So thank you guys so much for that. I appreciate the viewership, and we'll see you in the next video.